I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago Back a year ago
previously through the last few video clips uh, we've been fast forwarding we've been um, carving the outline of the lightning um, and we're done we're finished it's ready for resin no it's not it's nowhere near ready for resin um, uh, okay a couple of things it's taken a long long time to carve the outline um, it's taken longer than I was expecting um, it, it got very painful to be honest um, it's very painful on my uh, arm and my back uh, being lent over um, but also it would appear that from when I started I was sort of doing it very lightly on the wood to by the time I finished I was quite happy going deep and obviously well I would guess it's because my confidence had increased with uh, what I was doing so the process now um, is that I need to go back over the whole thing um, and take it to depth now hopefully because of having done the outlines already it should be a lot easier to do because the bit should want to follow um, what I've already carved um, now I don't know which bit I'm going to use yet um, oh, uh, we shall see um, but also what I'm probably going to do is focus mainly on the outer part. So the outline that I've already done, I'm basically going to do that, get that to depth. Um, and then after that, focus on the wider pieces that are going to need digging out. Now, I had thought about getting using a chisel, um, but... I actually feel I'd have less control over what I was doing with that. Mm. My apologies, I, I didn't have a very good night's sleep last night. I've been busy today and I'm not good. Um, yeah, so it's going to take a while. Well, it's going to take a while just to get what I've already done down to depth. And regarding depth, uh, I mean... Let's me tape measure. Let's check this. Ow. Okay, so if we have a look at how what the depth of the table is, so we're looking at it's about two centimeters. So depth wise. I was thinking about four or five mil, four, maybe five mil, so half a centimetre depth. Um, which, let me grab my, oh, my Dremel. So, just so I can sort of look at how. here the part that actually does the work from there up it's halfway uh, so it's, a, it's about there so I'm looking at oh, about half a centimetre depth which when it comes to carving the outline it is a quite deep to go um, and it's going to take a while <sighs> excuse me um, when we get to the wider bits that's going to take a long time to carve that out um, because at least with the outline I can basically sort of get the the bit in do a hole or go deep at one point and then all I've got to do is work my way through the pattern I've already got whereas the wider bits are basically going to have to like go all the way across digging it out um, but it needs to be deep enough that the resin will be thick enough um, because if I'm going to leave one or two mil 
gap at the top then I need to have a decent depth so that we can't see the wood through the colour because that's something I've got to make sure. A um, couple of things to note, some bits of the wood were really easy to carve other bits the darker pieces of wood they are fucking tough bits of wood um, and very difficult <sighs> I apologize but I know I was gonna be yawning this much I wouldn't have recorded this bit yet <clears throat> um, yeah so the darker bits of wood very very tough to get through now there is one other factor that I hadn't thought of previously but I sort of thought about it a couple of days ago and that is something that I didn't take into consideration at all is that on the underside of this table will be screws going into the into the table um, they are going to be coming up from underneath into the underside of this but I don't know how deep um, so there is the possibility that I may end up um, going so deep that I uncover where the screws would come through um, the places where that is most likely is right in the middle um, where there's a quite a wide piece of the resin will be um, and then on the ends where I've gone quite far to the ends the sides we should be okay because I've not gone all the way to the edge of the table uh, whereas lengthways I have gone a lot closer um, so I think if we are going to encounter it if it's on the ends it's not a problem because it's not very wide bit of resin there uh, and if it's in the middle then what I'm probably gonna have to do because hopefully the way I will find out if I am going over where a screw will be when I dig it out I'm gonna uncover a hole um, so if there's a hole I know that's where a screw will come through so a couple of things I have to be very careful with that obviously if I uncover a hole that means any resin that I pour in there is going to go through that hole um, so I would need to make sure that I fill that before I do a resin pour. Um, also, once this has been dug out, or, um, just as a reminder, that's when we'll apply um, the dark oak varnish. Um, we'll apply however many colours of that that I want to apply. There's colours and however many layers of that that I want to apply to get the right colour um, and then stop when I would have put start putting clear on at that point that's when I will apply a clear resin to all of the dug out parts the carved out bits to provide that barrier um, so that the resin won't soak through into the wood we'll let that clear coat do that and literally just paint it like, use a paintbrush and brush it on uh, as we've done before once that's dry obviously we can then um, do our resin pour as for how much I'm gonna need I haven't got a fucking clue um, I genuinely have no idea of how much volume of liquid um, this will take so I think well what I'm gonna have to do is overcompensate I'm gonna have to do way more than I think I will need um, see I'm thinking one of the plastic cups mixing cups that I have which is about that that big I was thinking one of those I don't think is going to be enough um, so we're probably going to have to go for I'm thinking double that to be on the safe side and then if we've got stuff left over that's when I'm going to have to make sure that I've got pieces available to be able to go right on a wax I can put the resin in that and in that and in that and all that kind of stuff so there's a lot to go through 
Um, but for now, I am going to take a break for a few days because I need it. I'm absolutely buggered. Um, uh, and having done this, at least I've got an idea now of, of what I'm doing. And I've got to say, I do like the way the pattern is looking. I don't know if you can see it too well. Um, in a moment, I will try and um, I'll clear the table and I'll see if we can see it on the camera because you may not have been able to see it too well but I do like how it's been looking and this is the thing as I had before I sort of started carving it I was very concerned because obviously if I fuck it up I fuck the table but with the first lot that I did I liked how it looked so I was like okay well let's keep going and okay if I fuck it up how am I going to fuck it up well more than likely it'll be the pouring of the resin the carving it, I'm not going to fuck it up um, carving it because even if I'd made a, a mistake um, it's a fluid design so all the sort of the drawing I did on it was a guide and so I've added bits um, where I felt bits would it would look better with a bit extra um, or I've added an extra turn or something like that um, so if, even when I did make mistakes because the, the Dremel was moving about a lot um, I was able to just go right well that's where we're going then um, so yeah and even if I do fuck up the resin pour okay if I fuck it up what's going to fuck up on it um, okay not being uh, not having enough colour in it well I'm going to hopefully compensate for that I'm going to put a lot of my, um, I was going to say pixels, um, oh, what's it called, I've got blue powder colour, um, it's not called pixels, it's called something else, I can't remember, um, but obviously with that I could use a small amount but I don't think I don't think I should. I think I should use quite a bit. Um, now, because um, one of the things to factor in with this is, so for example, when I poured the woman, oh, oh, okay. So when I poured the woman. Uh, I mean, I've got a lot of air bubbles on that, um, but a lot of air bubbles. Um, but with this colour, there's quite a lot of colour mixed into this. But if we were looking through the colour there, then the depth is a lot less than that. So if we were going very deep, we could probably get away with less colour because we'd be looking down through a lot more depth of colour. Whereas because we're going to be working with, what, half a centimetre, there's not a lot of depth in that. So, so because there isn't a lot of depth, we're going to have to make sure there's plenty of colour in it. Um, and that could cause its own issues but hopefully like with this where there is loads of air bubbles in this if you look at it there's none in the top oh, hang on uh, which was uh, I'm trying to think yeah it was that way um, okay so right there is air bubbles on a bum there but if you actually look there, there is none. There isn't any there either. So here, there's no air bubbles. Yes, there's air bubbles elsewhere. But this is the surface that I was able to heat with the heat gun, uh, with the flamethrower, um, to draw the air bubbles out. But because I was heating it there, it had all of this depth to try and get through to get all of the resin out. Uh, sorry, to get all of the air bubbles out. So in hindsight, something like this, I'd have been better off um, applying it so far, leaving it, getting the air bubbles out of that, and then topping it up and so on. 
um, but I didn't go down that route. So with the table, again, because we're only working with half a centimetre, when it comes to the air bubbles, we should have less of an issue because when we're applying the heat, it's only got that to go through, not that. So hopefully any issues that we would have with air bubbles will be solved. Um, and if we do end up with air bubbles left over, so be it, unfortunately. Um, now, if I end up pouring the blue and I've got a lot of air bubbles, then more than likely what I'll end up doing is adding something into it, like whether it be some gold flake or something like that, um, popping it in the holes or something. Um, and then, yeah, we top it off with the clear. Now, when it comes to pouring the clear, I don't necessarily want to go over the top of the carved out bits. I kind of want to go up to it, but at the same time, I don't want to be left with um, any bits. So as I said, that's the wood. I want the resin to end up being flush with it, not curved like that. And that's something I've, I've had before. Um, so where where I didn't let it sort of go over the top it ended up bulged in the middle because it was restricted from smoothing out completely so I'm probably going to have to go over the top a bit so that instead of it being like that it'll be more like that but then sand it down um, and that is why we will apply the varnish early on because once it comes to pouring the resin, I don't want to have to be doing any varnish other than clear coat. Um, now there was the possibility as well of doing a, a French polish stuff. Sorry about that, memory died. Um, okay, so yeah, I was saying there was the possibility of doing a French polish style finish on it, but I'm not going to um, do that. Um, the technique won't work with varnish, um, you have to use um, shellac polish which I have ordered some and it's uh, on the way I've also got some cloths um, so I've got a set of drawers um, that uh, I'm going to try and French polish um, uh, and also um, yeah I might there's another project I might I might use um, French polish on what we'll see uh, Anyway, for now, I'm done, I'm knackered, I'm going to take a break, I'm going to get some food, I'm going to have a sleep, um, and uh, yeah, we'll see what's next. Uh, so have a good one everybody, and uh, I'll see you all soon uh, for more Dave Gets Wood, or Dave Gets Shafted, or Dave Wins Races. Um, so yeah, all right, have a good one, I'll catch you in a bit.